Hello, in this journey of understanding about polymeric materials, uh, we are in sixth week where we are focusing on properties and uh, given that we have uh, looked at uh, so many polymeric systems of different kind, let us look at uh, properties of composites in this lecture. And uh, we will do this by first looking at what are the different types of uh, fillers or reinforcements which are used uh, in these composite materials. because the type of fillers will determine the eventual properties of these material systems. And uh, then we will look at some simple mixing rules which uh, are guidelines to look at uh, how the properties of a composite system depend on the constituent properties. And uh, one of the important ideas related to percolation whenever we have a continuous network of filler being there in the system. So, the uh, examples of uh, uh, types of fillers that are used, uh, quite often we may use just the particulate uh, filler itself. And uh, so, spherical particles or talc powder, for example, this is a filler which is used uh, talc or calcium carbonate. So, these are all uh, particles which are used. And uh, quite often when we use particles, uh, the purpose is to reduce cost. Uh, that is not always the case. For example, when we add carbon black into a polymeric sample, uh, it is to induce conductivity at uh, times. And so, there the specific role of carbon is to introduce a property into the material which is otherwise not there. In an insulating polymer, a conducting carbon is added. But quite often, uh, particulate fillers are added as uh, mineral fillers or uh, fillers which uh, can reduce cost. They of course, modify properties also. Stiffness can improve, modulus can improve, uh, barrier properties can improve. However, it may also happen that strength may decrease depending on the specific interaction between the filler that is added and the polymeric material. When we start increasing the aspect ratio of the fiber and uh, we saw this already in earlier lecture that ease of processing becomes less and less when we increase the aspect ratio of the filler. But property improvement is more and more when we add. So, for example, instead of adding a particle, we could add a chopped fiber. So, many of the uh, filled polymers, uh, chopped fiber is quite commonly added. We could use a roving, uh, basically a fiber uh, which can be taken off of a spool and then incorporate it into a polymeric materials. We could use a unidirectional arrangement of uh, the fibers or we could make a fabric out of the fabric, uh, the fibers and uh, you can see that uh, this is going to be anisotropic. If a uh, uh, force is applied in uh, this direction, the property is going to be very different compared to property in this direction. So, therefore, this uh, is going to be an, an anisotropic material. While this will be isotropic. However, what about the thickness direction? So, if I were to ask you the question that what will be the property in this direction? So, you can see that since again fibers, if we stack different fabrics like this, again the property in that direction is going to be because there is no fiber which is going to be oriented in that direction. So, these uh, materials are called transversely transversely isotropic because they are isotropic in the plane alone, not in the thickness direction. So, so these are different types of uh, fillers which are incorporated and quite often rather than just taking them by uh, themselves, we pre-mix them with a polymeric material before they are uh, used in a fabrication. So, for example, with the short fibers, chopped fibers can be incorporated along with a thermoplastic material and then we can have injection molding pellets. So, instead of molding uh, pellets of just a pure polymer, we can have injection molding of these reinforced pellets. And this is quite commonly done with uh, uh, glass fiber or variety of other fibers. Uh, there are several other ways and especially this is uh, for uh, thermosetting compounds, uh, we can form a bulk molding compound or a sheet molding compound. So, here again uh, the pre polymer 
plus fiber are mixed together and then uh, during processing this mixture is cured. So, it is in since it is pre polymer and uh, fiber then this can be molded uh, you can shape it and once shaping is finished then you can uh, uh, induce curing in the material and therefore, uh, curing can happen and curing would imply basically higher temperature. So, that uh, uh, cross linking reactions can take place. So, for thermosetting materials usually SMC or BMC as they are called are uh, composite forms which are used. Thermoplastics on the other hand uh, one can uh, impregnate uh, the uh, with chopped fiber or a continuous strand mat and uh, as the name suggests there is continuous fiber which is just uh, everywhere and in this case there are fibers which are uh, located. And uh, these sheets then can be used uh, to form the final part. You can stack multiple sheets on top of each other. Each of these you can see that uh, one of the important aspects is the length of the fiber as well as its orientation. Because these sheets for example, uh, in the uh, thickness direction is only polymer which determines the properties. In the plane, the fibers are there. So, therefore, most of these materials may end up being transversely isotropic as opposed to being isotropic in all three directions. And so, anisotropy is usually associated with uh, reinforced materials such as composites. One other uh, common way of uh, making uh, a polymer composite and this is especially true for aerospace for example, epoxy prepreg is uh, nothing but a pre impregnated form. So, the fabric as we saw earlier, uh, fabric is taken and uh, so fabric of a reinforcement plus epoxy pre polymer is added together and we prepare tapes of these materials and we can keep them as rolls. And uh, in fact, it is quite uh, interesting to observe how a complex part such as aerospace wing, aeroplane wing or, or large parts which are required for aerospace applications are made. Uh, if you just search for prepreg uh, hand layup, you will see that these prepregs are unrolled and then they are by hand laid on top of each other and then this whole assembly is put in the autoclave as we saw in an earlier lecture and the autoclave can be size of rooms and bigger rooms and halls and things like that depending on the size of the part that is being cured. So, in all of these uh, ease of processing is not there because of these continuous fabrics which are there in the material. However, from a material performance point of view, excellent performance is obtained because of the continuous fibers being present in such systems. So, what are the properties of uh, composite once we mix the fiber and the, so fiber and uh, matrix are mixed in certain proportion uh, with uh, of course, the volume fraction of both of them summing to 1. And uh, the modulus uh, can uh, be a rule uh, way of uh, mixture where there is a parallel and then there is a serial addition of these. For example, if you have two materials which are bonded to each other with a perfect bond and then uh, we are applying a force on this and the question is uh, what will be the strain in the material. So, given that there is a stress in the material, what is the strain in the material? And uh, we could uh, have the same uh, material combination in uh, another way where it is a and this uh, idea we will see again later on when we look at uh, models of viscoelasticity also. So, here also if we apply sigma then what is the strain and this is again a perfect bond. So, the bond surface is perfect in both cases. However, what will happen is in uh, this case, it is the same sigma which is seen by both the materials while the strain in the two materials may be different while in this case, it is going to be the same strain which is seen, but the stress in the two materials will be different. 
So, in this case sigma 1 plus sigma 2 will be equal to sigma while maybe I will just uh, use the will be equal to sigma while in uh, this case we have E 1 plus E 2 equal to the total strain. So, the series parallel combinations are what based on these uh, mixing rules and uh, can you try to say uh, which one is parallel and which one is series. So, if you are able to uh, look at the fact that strain sums up in one case and in other case stress sums up because stress is related to modulus times the strain. So, you can quickly see that uh, this is related to the uh, mixing rule while this is related to this mixing rule. And so, uh, these mixing rules are guidelines by which we can try to analyze the response of a composite material. However, the mixing rules uh, are very simplistic and there are several other models which are present for example, Halpin Psi model which has been around for 2-3 decades or even more and uh, where uh, depending on the aspect ratio of the fiber and uh, depending on uh, how the uh, arrangement of uh, these uh, is, we can uh, calculate the overall composite properties in terms of volume fraction and uh, the aspect ratio of the filler. One of the other things that uh, we have to uh, consider while looking at the properties of composites, uh, one is amount which we have already discussed. So, higher the amount will lead to greater reinforcement. However, distribution of the filler is also equally important. When we are processing a polymeric part, uh, the fibers can get distributed differently and we can observe some regions where there is only polymer and some region where there is largely fiber and very less polymer. So, such uh, possibilities will lead to a maldistribution of fibers and clearly properties will vary from point to point. Sometimes of course, this can be used as a tunability aspect. So, if we have a weaker part in our overall engineering design, we want more reinforcement, we could design the flow in such a way that fibers accumulate there. So, that uh, there is strengthening of a weaker part. But more importantly, what we need to understand here is there is a very good correspondence between how the filler is distributed and what is the property of the material. So, not only do we need to know the overall amount of the filler, we need to also know its distribution and its orientation. And one of the aspects which is also important uh, related at to composite property is the idea of percolation. Whenever we add small amounts of filler, reinforcement is uh, going to be not very high. As we start adding more and more filler, we reach percolation where fillers start touching each other. So, for example, if we use let us say chopped fibers in a sample, so let us say we are preparing a composite sample and we use some chopped fiber. If we use them in low percentage, you can see that all the fibers are not interacting with each other and we say that percolation limit is not reached. However, if I increase the percentage of these fillers, and then uh, what happens is again they are randomly oriented, but now there is a percolating network of these fibers. Now, if these fibers are conducting while the polymer is not, then we can in fact reach electrical percolation. These fibers certainly will carry the load more than the matrix and therefore, mechanical percolation is also reached. So, by measuring modulus or by measuring conductivity, we can also find out whether percolation is there. And uh, one of the reasons for uh, percolation to be important, let us say for example, for conductivity is the fact that conductivity as a function of volume fraction can increase order of magnitude. So, this can be 7 orders of magnitude or even higher. Can you guess why that is the case? Because if let us say there is a 0 uh, volume fraction of the filler, then basically the material is insulating. 
and conductivity will be 10 to the power minus 7, which is uh, or 10 to the power minus 10 or 10 to the power minus 14. And once carbon is added, uh, which starts connecting with each other, let us say a nanotube is added or a graphene sheet is added or uh, any other uh, fiber which is conducting is added, then what we have is electrical percolation and then conductivity can increase all the way up to 10 to the power 2. So, we have not just 7, 7 to 10, uh, 12 orders of magnitude of change of this conductivity. So, one idea associated with percolation is this orders of magnitude change in properties. And so, whenever we reach this phenomena of percolation, this kind of significant change in properties is observed and this is done, this is also observed for many composites materials. The other uh, key therefore, is uh, the processing technique has to ensure that we either achieve uniform distribution or a targeted distribution. So, as I mentioned, uh, if we want a certain part of the polymeric uh, 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 part which is thin and it needs to be strengthened, we can design it in such a way that it may have higher fraction of fibers. But then this target distribution has to be achieved using the processing technique and the flow rates and whatever molding conditions, temperature, pressure we are using. And uh, just to look at uh, the load carrying capacity that we have been talking about. So, if a composite material consists of 30 percent by uniaxially aligned class fibers. So, a clear that orientation is very important. And uh, the fiber properties and the matrix properties are given and then if you apply a 100 mega Pascal parallel to the fibers. So, depending on the mixing rule that we discussed uh, on the previous slide, we can then uh, evaluate the strain which is there in this material. The other aspect of uh, composite material performance is related to electrical or thermal conductivity as we have discussed. And uh, here again, uh, the model which is used for a very dilute system is related to uh, Maxwell uh, development, where uh, the conductivity of uh, fiber and matrix is related to the overall thermal conductivity of the composite. So, depending on the fiber uh, volume fraction, the filler volume fraction, uh, this can vary. And it, this is again the simplest possible model to estimate uh, electrical or thermal conductivity in the material. And there are more complex inter empirical and semi empirical uh, relations which are also used by different practitioners of uh, polymeric composite industry. So, with this, uh, I am sure you can uh, looking at the mixing rule calculate the overall percentage strain uh, that is possible. And it just depends on uh, what is the volume fraction 0.3 and 0.7 that is added and the properties of matrix and the fiber. So, with this, we will close this lecture and we will continue our journey for exploring more properties of polymers in a lecture later on. Thank you.